welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And today we're doing two updates to the 1200. Uh, I will be doing this update to everybody eventually, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do the 1200 because it's about the most easiest to get in and out of. A couple things we've got. Um, one, we've got the uh, Kickstart 3.2 ROMs that, uh, well, that says 3.2.1. Don't panic. Already verified with Sorden. That's just a sticker goof. It is 3.2.2 .2 for the 1200. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in. But first, and that's just because I think the ROMs, actually the ROMs of my 1200 are 3.2, old school, original 3.2s. And I've been doing like the re-kick uh, stuff with it because I'm using the uh, Pi Storm in here. It's doing the re-kick to get me 47.111. The load module should detect that that the real ROMs are in there now and it shouldn't have to do the re-kick for that. If not, because I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm doing, which is entirely possible, I'll have to remove those lines or whatever to make it not do that. But the first thing I wanna do is update our lovely, as you see here in the corner, Amiga stuff, our lovely uh, SMB two and three support. There is a new version of this out now and I'll of course put the link in the description below for those files. I saw something about class act and reaction support, which has come with Amiga OS since version 3.1.4, I think. And what it, I think what it does is maybe gives this a GUI now for like at least username, password. I think, I can't be certain. I may have to redo stuff or edit text files again. I don't know. I'm gonna copy over the new versions, reboot and see what happens. All right, so we've extracted the new version of file sysbox, which you do need. Again, these will all be linked down below. This stuff is all on AmyNet, by the way. So if you ever forget the description or you know lose this video, just go to the AmyNet.net and you can find these files. And then of course our SMB2FS. It's pretty straightforward. You unpack it and then uh, you run it. So the stack is currently running, but we should be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and install this. Boom, done. See how quick that was? Install this. Boom, done. Okay, that's it. Yay. So now I will go ahead and reboot. Well, there you go. Something just happened. Come back, and this is what I get for not testing stuff in WinUAE first. <laughs> it looks like the SMB2 handler is having a little bit of a snafu problem. I'll go ahead and blur that because that actually has my local username and password for that share, but it looks like it's trying to figure out some SMB stuff here where it's it's telling me that my username and password and share it can't parse the URL. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, for you, it was really quick. For me, it was quite a while. So I finally figured this out. I basically had to bug Chris Edwards again while he was trying to eat his dinner. Sorry about that, Chris. Um, in At startup, I went ahead and did a reboot. He gave me the tip of rebooting the Amiga, holding down both mouse buttons, and then doing the trace startup sequence so you can find out when and where it's triggering. Well, it turned out it was triggering when the startup sequence got to dev mount DOS drivers. And in DOS drivers, for some reason, maybe this is from when I first started playing around with networking on the Amiga, I had a mount list in here. And this mount list is what was getting called by the startup sequence because it's mounting DOS drivers. And so it mounts CFO and it mounts whatever else might be in this folder. So it was hitting that mount list and kaboom, it was freaking out and saying, I. First it was saying, I can't understand your mount list. It doesn't make sense to me. And then additionally, it was just giving me a intuition pop up because of a, something that it was trying to do. But it doesn't matter. I don't need that mount list. I always just launch my share by double clicking this file here on the good old uh, desktop. I double click this and then the share pops up and we're all good to go. So I don't, I don't know what that mount list was from. So you may not even have this weirdness I had, you can update your SMB and file sysbox just fine and you should be okay. Unless you're using a mount list like I was using, then you might have a problem, but I don't know. Removing that mount list, I can reboot, no issues, no pop-ups, no wackiness. And again, I just double click my share and it popped right up. Yay, all right, so that chaos has been taken care of. I'm gonna move on to the ROMs.
All right, so we're booting up now with the new ROMs, hopefully. And I don't think, well, see, that I, that looked faster to me. I'm, the way the startup sequence works, if I understand it properly, if it detects that you have the ROMs, it doesn't have to do a re-kick. So, yeah, I mean, it says 4711. Of course it does. Uh, but I didn't see the extra, there's usually an extra boot cycle. Like when I'm booting up the Pi Storm, or it would, it, you would see it like come up and then you'd hear the floppy go zit zit and then it would flash the screen black again and then it goes zit zit and then it would boot again and i'm assuming that's the re-kick so yeah the startup sequence load module detect for the rom and all that i guess makes that all work okay so there we covered a bunch of stuff we covered the amazing um rom upgrade to 322 we covered um putting in the new smv with all of its weird wacky challenges and uh yes now i'm uh going to have us go into the world of comparing files on the 4000 and the 1200, 1660, and the new update to PyStorm that just dropped. I've got the HAM8 opt8 long word 32 file converting, okay? What do you mean converting? What am I doing to it? Well, I'm taking it down in size. I'm taking it down from its default of 736 by 480. Actually, it's higher than that. It's uh, 70, what is it? You can see right there. 704 by 564. That's its original size in PAL. And I'm crushing it down to half that, to 348 by 229. Keeping it HAM 8 and ANIM 8. But why am I crushing it down? That's not fair. Well, I'm doing that so that we can have a relative speed comparison between the 4000 and the 1200 with the Pi Storm. So we've got the 1200 with the Pi Storm and it's, so, or it's the 1200 and the Pi Storm 32, sorry. And then we have the 4000 with its 1660. And as I'd shown before in another video, the 4000 was much faster. But now we have this new Pi Storm update and I've already shown that it is quicker. Uh, but what I wanna do now is try and compare HAM8 to HAM8 on both machines. Now, because I've made this file smaller, it it may be eliminating the overhead, oops, <laughs> it may be eliminating the overhead of the issue the Pi was having and they could both play super fast. Who knows? I don't know. But I just wanted to make it so that I could play the HAM8 file over here on my 4000 because I lack the memory I need to play the original source file. Yeah, so it, it, anyway, you can't play it. The 4000 just can't handle the, the file size. But I did want to compare HAM8 to HAM8 on these two machines side by side now that the Pi Storm is updated. So that's what we're waiting for. Ad Pro is blistering through the conversion. Pi Storm is very fast with that math stuff. So now I'm going ahead and we're copying that scaled file over to the network so that I can then get it over to the 4000. And yeah, it's definitely down in size. It went from 190 megabytes to 381 megabytes. Uh, what? Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm missing a zero. <laughs> it went from 190 megabytes to 38 megabytes. Much, much better. So now both these computers, uh, well, now, now every computer with the exception to the 2500 could play this. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I hope, again, that I haven't made it so small that it's gonna like basically not show the issue, right? Because we do know that the Pi Storm is slower than the 4000 when playing full res uh, anim files. But who knows? If, I'm, I'm as excited as you are to find out if, if there's going to be a difference, even for the small one. Okay, so here we are. We've now got the Pi Storm 1200 ready to go. They got the 1660 4000 ready to go. We're going to go ahead and load up the scaled handmade animation on both of these using main actor because this has been the one that's proved to be the most reliable. So as you can see here, the Pi Storm is playing that pretty darn smoothly. And I would actually argue that, well, because we have scaled it down so much, yeah, it's playing smooth. It's playing really smooth because it's been scaled down. However, uh, you know, the 4000 is still loading. Okay. But there's the 4000 playing now. Now the 4000's hard drive is only 1.6 megabytes a second, whereas the Pi Storm's on board is like 13 megs a second. So what we can see here on the side by side at this resolution, at this half-scaled bandwidth, they are both pretty much identical. So that is a little telling. So what we're seeing here is that because 
the bandwidth of this image file has been scaled down from full, you know, 720 by 480 to half res. Uh, it's definitely able to be more on par with the native Amiga. Now, I want to make another claim here. Remember, all of this weird Anim 8 stuff I've been doing and scaling animations, none of that was necessary on a native Amiga with a 68060 and the AGA chipset. It played everything nice and fast and fluid. All of the things I've been doing are concessions to try and get the Pi Storm to play awesomely. All right? Now, again, I know that sounds a little negative, a little harsh, but it's not. It's just we're trying to get this working. And the most recent update has definitely made the Pi Storm work a lot more smoothly. But this is what I feared. I, I scaled the test file down so much that it's not causing the bandwidth issue that was pushing the Pi Storm to, to its extreme. So this is kind of cool to see that they're both playing back at this smooth speed. By scaling the video down this small, I've removed the overhead issue with the Pi Storm and kind of, you know, made it look like they're the same. So if you've watched my prior videos, you know that the update to the Pi Storm 32 has made it much, much better for playback of Anim files. It's made it basically amazing for gaming. So if you're a gamer, you've got all that stuff going. But yeah, uh, there's more room to be done here on the Pi Storm to get it to play full res, full screen, 720 by 480 ham 8 files uh, fast. The Amiga 4000 can play the files very quickly, even in the old Anim 5 format. The Pi Storm needed the files to be in Anim 8 format. I don't know if, you know, obviously you, you don't want to go back, convert old videos and Anim files, whatever. But if you're moving forward and you're creating new content, your retro content, stick to Anim 8. It's more efficient. Uh, the, things like the Pi love it. So I, I don't know. Does this help anybody when I show you guys this? I don't know if this helps anybody. I'm just trying to show everything that I encounter when I do it. Yeah, uh, cutting the video size down in half makes them both pretty much play at the same speed, <laughs> which is an improvement for the Pi. It is. The previous Pi uh, firmware would not even probably have been able to do this. So this is an improvement. And it's cool to see that. I love doing these comparisons. Come on, Pi Storm 32 guys. Be inspired, right? Just keep going. Keep pushing it. Let's get this code cracking. Yes. All right. I'm done with this video.